Hello. Okay. My um, name is my name is Violet Haldane, and today we are speaking with State Representative Joshua Hall, and he will be interviewed by Ms. Chris and folks. The purpose of this discussion is to help our community understand more about how local government works. This came about in after the 20, 2018 elections. We had a community conversation and the audience um, suggested that we have this type of discussion so they could learn more about what the various roles are in government and what each role is responsible for. So this is a follow-up to that. And I'm going to hand it over to Chris Ann, who will be our moderator for this event. Thank you. Um, good morning, Mr. Hall. Uh, my name is Chris Ann Oaks, and I am a high school student at Southfield High School. I am a junior. Uh, and just get to know, like, what, how do you do your job, what your job is, and, um, I want to get that out to the public so they can know, like, when they're voting. Absolutely. Who they're voting for. So. So, uh, good morning, Chris and good, good morning, uh, Violet. Uh, as you indicated, I'm State Representative Joshua Hall. I represent the 7th District here in uh, Hartford. What, what were the steps that you had to take to become a state representative, and how did you become a state representative? Like, was it like an election, or what, how did you go so, about it? So thank you for that question. So my first foray into politics, and I think that's where pretty much everyone gets started, is that I uh, successfully ran with a team of folks for the 7th District Democratic Town Committee. So that was my first foray into politics. And essentially the purpose of the town committee is to uh, endorse candidates for various positions, whether it be a uh, register of voters, board of ed, state representative, and state, uh, state senator. Um, so fast forward, uh, I think about five years, uh, state representative McCrory at the time, uh, well, actually, let me back up, uh, state senator Eric Coleman uh, resigned with the ambition of becoming a judge, which he successfully did. Uh, so his seat became open, uh, state representative uh, Doug McCrory ran for his Senate seat and he was successful. And so that, that state representative seat opened up for the seventh district. And so I ran, I, uh, I wanted to be the democratic nominee, uh, for that, uh, for that position. I wasn't successful in being the Democrat, uh, nominee. Uh, however, uh, I was endorsed by the working families party. Uh, and so there was a, there was an election, um, uh, and it was a three-way race uh, between uh, myself, uh, former state representative Kenneth Green, and uh, the endorsed Democrat candidate, Ricky Pinckney. Uh, it was very uh, heartfelt and hard fought campaign. Uh, and fortunately I was, I, I was successful in that, in that endeavor. Uh, so that's how it became the uh, state representative. And so just so uh, we understand, Connecticut is different from a lot of states with regard to how campaigns are run more importantly, how they're funded. We have a state elections uh, program, which essentially allows uh, candidates to raise a certain amount of money. And that money specifically is if you raise $5,000 and then get $155 donations from, or minimum $5 donations from uh, Hartford residents, as an example, uh, the state gives you uh, essentially the money to run a campaign. And so what that allows for, uh, it opens a process up. Uh, we know that money, money in politics matters, uh, and especially for those who have uh, lesser means, and that sometimes is a, a hesitancy about running. But I think Connecticut provides an opportunity for a lot of folks to get engaged and get involved, especially at the, the state representative, state senator level, because you just essentially have to raise money and that money allows you to get the message out uh, to, to voters across uh, the district that you choose or wish to represent. Okay, thank you. Um, so I know um, that being a state representative, uh, you're not like in charge of an entire state, but for like a specific district or area. So what area are you in charge of? 
So, um, so we don't we don't uh, phrase it or frame it that way as being, as being in charge of something. What it is we represent? So, so uh, the the voters of the district vote us to represent their voice at the state capitol. Uh, and so we go out, we campaign, we, we share our vision, we share our ideas about how we want to improve the district. The district I represent is the seventh district in Hartford. That essentially covers the entire Blue Hills area, uh, parts of, of, uh, of Upper Albany, parts of Clay Arsenal, parts of Northeast, okay. uh, parts of Asylum Hill, and parts of downtown. So it's a very uh, oblong straight district. Most districts are uh, have a uh, similar shape, but mine is, uh, is is very interesting. For example, the state capital is in my district, so it spreads a, it crosses a lot of different uh, neighborhoods uh, in in Hartford. Okay, that's good to know. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, what are your responsibilities as state representative? Uh, so, uh, my official. Uh, titles uh, first are I'm uh, assistant majority leader, but I'm also the vice chair of the labor and public employees committee. Uh, and so, as as vice chair, if the chair is not able to conduct a meeting, as an example, a committee meeting, then that that responsibility falls uh, falls to me. I am also on the transportation and planning. Uh, and development committee and so uh, part of that is reviewing legislation listening to constituents uh, listening to uh, uh, special interests as lobbyists or other folks who uh, care about certain issues and and taking all that information in and processing and, and trying to make the des best decision possible uh, specifically for the, the folks in my district or for the, the state of Connecticut uh, at large. I sit on the transportation committee and the planning development committee, and I'm the vice chair of the uh, labor and public employees committee. Did you guys have a meeting to like vote on, like, how you guys you guys were uh, allow people, Hartford citizens, to um, take the bus without paying? Like, were you involved in that? So that's so yes. So that's 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 a conversation that the uh, that that is a consideration that comes before uh, the transportation committee, but it also goes to several other committees because when you talk about any cost, uh, that is that is something that the the appropriations committee and the appropriations committee approach, appropriates the money or determines uh, essentially what the budget is uh, for the state of Connecticut, and so what the impact of uh, free transportation as an example would be. And so, yes, involved in those conversations. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, also, do you got, do you, do you as a state representative, do you have a term limit? Like, yes. So we want, we run for reelection uh, every two years. And so this November uh, I am up for reelection. Uh, there was a, Primary, however, I did not have a primary opponent, so I did, I did not participate in the August 11th primary. Uh, and as it stands right now, uh, I don't have an opponent uh, for the November election either. So I'm presumed to be, uh, you know, the, the, the candidate on election day. And of course, uh, because right now I don't have an opponent, uh, I'm presumed to be the uh, for for another term. I'll, reelected for another term okay your job like is there anything that the community needs to know like that I haven't asked Ooh, like how does it work yeah so I, I would I would say that uh, we're in an unprecedented time in our in our nation in our state in our city uh, just with all the uh, challenges and, and uh, obstacles that we're facing, but there are some very important things that uh, folks in our community need to make sure they do. Uh, number one is vote. Uh, that's absolutely uh, extremely important, uh, especially at this time. But the other thing is to fill out the census. Uh, so what, what people think the census is, is just counting people, which is absolutely, that's what it is. But the, the reason they count people is to determine the resources that come to a particular, particular uh, state, city, town. 
Uh, and so if we're not, if we're not counting ourselves, uh, that means that the resources that we get are going to be less. And that means that we're not going to have the representation that we are, we need to have uh, at the federal level. So if, if you're viewing this, this video, uh, uh, please fill out the census. It's extremely, extremely important uh, for uh, the resources that uh, places like Hartford and the state of Connecticut receive. Okay, and um, what does the term all politics is local mean to you? So, so as an example, and, and that, that's why the census is so extremely important, resources uh, to some extent flow from the federal government. Uh, and so they send money to Connecticut. And so then Connecticut send mon sends money to the city. And so it's your local representatives that are actually determining how those resources, how that money is utilized. So as a state representative, uh, part of our task is to make sure we send as many resources to our district, but more specifically our city, so they have the resources to, to address uh, the, uh, the, the challenges, the issues that uh, folks in the community want addressed and want, want dealt with. And so, but that, that, that power rests uh, largely uh, with your uh, mayor and your city council. And so the mayor and the city council are determining the resources that, we, that they get from the state, which myself and the rest of the Hartford delegation uh, make sure uh, the city of Hartford has, they determine how those resources are being used. And so when it says all politics are local, it's your local mayor and your local city council and your board of ed for that matter, who are determining the resources uh, and the decisions that impact you as a student uh, and other constituents, uh, your, your lives uh, on a daily basis. Okay, so... I know it's not up to um, you as a state representative to determine like how the money is used, but you have um, standards and so, stuff. Right. So let me yeah. So let me clarify. So there there are there are certain there are resources that we send that we can we specifically say that this money is for X or this money is for Y. But when I say but those those in comparison those that is small compared to when we send municipal aid. And so municipal aid is just that, aiding the, the municipality or aiding the city of Hartford. When we send ECS, uh, the Education Cost Sharing Grant, uh, that is money that goes specifically to the Board of Education. And so we don't control how those, and so the bulk of the money we send, we don't have a say in how it's spent, right? However, there is money that, for example, uh, uh, when we get, uh, asked for different allotments as far as bond dollars are concerned. And so that helps uh, the development at Westbrook Village or Bowles Park. And you see that housing development where well, that comes through bond money. And so we can specifically say that these dollars are meant to support this individual project. But the vast majority of the money that's sent to uh, places like Hartford, uh, Windsor or Bloomfield for that matter, come in the form of municipal aid or ECS grants, and we don't, we don't have a say in how that money is spent. The local town uh, officials and the Board of Education determine how those resources are used. How do they decide like how the money is spent? But you just explained that that's not, you don't have a say in how it's spent, so. No, I don't have a say, but I mean, they have their city council meetings that are held twice a month, their Board of Education meetings, and all of that information is, is transparent and public as far as the determinations that they're made and the decision-making process. And so the community has the ability to uh, comment uh, and, and address and say that, you know what, we need, uh, for example, we, we have a issue with car speeding in, in the Blue Hills neighborhood, right? And so uh, one of the things that, that folks talked about is how do we get more speed bumps in you know, our speed tables or speed humps uh, and so uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, uh, there was a grant that came through that allowed for that to happen. And so people speaking up about the issues and challenges their particular neighborhood or streets are facing and bringing those issues to their NRZ uh, or their local community groups and then uh, making sure that uh, local officials are uh, addressing and, and hearing uh, those issues. And so that's how that process and that's how that process works. And that's extremely important. Oh, uh, so the people um come up with a complaint and they make a complaint to their local official right. right 
And then the local officials um, make the complaint to who? So their, their local officials, uh, if they don't have the resources to, to address that, they would then call on the state representatives uh, and say that, you know what, we need money for this, for X, Y, or Z. And then we go to our, uh, at the state level, we then uh, petition to, to ensure that those resources come to the city uh, for, to try to address those issues. So that's how that, that process would work. Okay. So, so, so in those types of circumstances, it's like it's a, it's a bottom up as a whole set top down. So as elected representatives, uh, what, we, what we always cherish and we always want is community engagement in terms of what are the needs of the community and what, what does the community think it needs to make sure that the quality of life is enhanced. Uh, we have our own ideas, that's like everybody, but you know, hearing from the community as far as what the, what the needs really are is extremely, extremely important and beneficial because at the end of the day, uh, we're here to represent your voice, uh, not our own voice, right? And so that's why it's important. How do we let people know how they should go about um, voting for their lo local officials? Like, yeah. So, uh, so during campaign season, so election materials are sent out of uh, letting folks know when the election is and why they should uh, support a particular candidate. So all that information is sent out. But just as, just as a representative, uh, part of my responsibility is to try, uh, is to ensure a constant communication uh, and, and, and constituent engagement. So we often send out newsletters with regard to the things that we're working on, the things that we're doing. Uh, and trying to make sure that folks are abreast of the, the, the different things that are happening at the state level uh, and how that impacts them in their community and in their city. Okay. Well, thank you. No, oh, thank you. Uh, meeting today. I'm going to hand it back over to Ms. Haldane. Thank you, uh, Chris Ann. It was uh, great uh, talking with you, and I look forward yeah. to the great things that you're going to do uh, in your future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris Ann. Excellent interview. And <laughs> thank you, uh, State Representative Hall. Really appreciate you taking the time out today to come and speak with us. And I know that you're busy, and I think we learned a lot today from this conversation. And we will be in touch with you. And we do have our takeaway that our voice counts and our voice matters. Continued success with your political career. Thank you very much.